Sydney. Sister Clarissa and Brother Ball, we thank God 
uh, for doing that. We thank God for all of you. Amen. And it's just your way to be in the house of the Lord. And Pastor Queen is working diligently on getting us some air in this, in this space. Uh, so y'all continue to pray. And I'm waiting for the right person to come along. Amen. The right, the right deal to come along. Amen. God will God send it. Won't he send it? Yes, Lord. Amen. I don't, I don't want to be hot. God don't want y'all to be hot. Amen. We, we'll get it together after a while. But in the meantime, uh, as we're going through this process together, we won't murmur. We won't complain. We'll give thanks unto the Lord. Amen. I heard a dynamic message on, uh, yesterday uh, by uh, Elder Gomes. And he preached uh, for the Night Pain Youth Service on yesterday. And y'all get the chance to go on the Night Pain uh, website, uh, our, our Facebook page. Y'all hear that young man. That young man preached. I can't wait for the church to open up for the I have him down here because that young man preached out of Buffalo. But he was talking about David, David uh, being left in a hole, going through his circumstances. And as he was praying to God for help, he, he likened it to be in a hole, in a, in a quiet place. And he said, in my, in my affliction, I will wait on the Lord. And that brother brought out that word, uh, uh, wait, and to be patient. And he said, it's like, he said, wait and patient. Uh, two times, which means that he will actually wait on God and emotionally he will wait on God, meaning that uh, he'll wait physically in that space on God and, and emotionally he won't murmur and complain. He, he, won't, he, won't, he won't cause any shame to come. He, he, he'll give God praise in his space. And ain't that what we ought to do? And you know, we ought to be physical in our, in our space and waiting on God, but also in our internal uh, uh, self, we ought to wait on God without murmuring, without complaining, giving thanks unto the Lord. And, and he, had this, he had this conclusion as he was preaching. Last time I preached his whole message. <laughs> but he had this conclusion. He said, he said even, even, even if God doesn't do it, he's the only one that can. So you might as well wait. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's the only one that can. Amen. So you're waiting on the right one. Wait on the Lord. Huh? And while you're waiting, be of good courage. Amen. And he'll strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Come. Yes. Amen. Ain't that what he said? If you're waiting, you possess your soul. You wait and you automatically learn patience. Amen. He did say that. Amen. Come on, give God a praise. Amen. Yeah, so as we get ready, get ready for our service on today, uh, let us remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord will continue to save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And as we uh, get ourselves together and move forward in the Lord, let us, let us count it all joy, the Bible says, when we fall into different types of temptations. Let us, let us not be weary in well-doing, for we shall reap if we faint not. Uh, are there any other particular prayer requests? Amen. All right, pray for the success of the service. Pray for any sick and shut-in that you may know, and pray that the Lord will continue to bless us in the name of Jesus. So we want to ask Minister Quinn and he'll come up and pray. We're going to have Deacon Fields read us our scripture reading. Amen for today. Bless ye the name of the Lord. Jesus. And Father, and just bless the service. Lord God, in the name 
Father. We give you glory, O Heavenly Father. We give you praise, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, we just thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Father, for all your wonderful blessings. For all your wonderful blessings, Lord God. We adore you. We love you, Lord Jesus. And Lord God, we ask you, Lord God. Oh, Father, that you just bless this portion of the service, Lord God. Lord God, you bless you bless this service, Father. Bless the man of God, Lord Jesus. Oh, Father God, bless the, bless the message, Lord God. That we need, oh, Heavenly Father. In the mighty name of Jesus. Lord God, we thank you, we honor you, and we praise you, Lord Father. And Lord God, we ask you, Lord Father, that you remember the ones that are home, Lord Father. That you only sit there, Lord God. That you send a message to them, Lord God. A ring of message, Lord God. That you encourage their hearts and their minds, Lord God. I will extol thee, O Lord, yeah. for thou hast lifted me up, yeah. and hast not made my foes to rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried unto thee, and thou hast healed me. O Lord, thou hast brought my soul from the grave. Thou hast kept me alive, yeah. and I should not go down to the pit. Sing unto the Lord, O ye saints of his, yes. and give thanks at the remembrance of his holiness. For his anger endures but a moment, yes. and his favor is life. Yes. Weeping may endure for a night, yes, Lord. but joy yes. cometh in the morning. Amen. May the Lord have blessed to the reading of his word. Yes.
believe it's Peter Whitney Day. Whitney Day? Amen. And we certainly thank God for you.
Pastor Moore and, uh, and a couple other churches will be here with us fellowshipping this Sunday, July 11th, and that service starts at 4 p.m. They'll be coming all the way from uh, uh, Youngstown, Ohio, and Bishop Moore, he'll be the speaker uh, for the hour. And we certainly do praise God and thank God for that in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And I don't want to keep you too long on today. We're moving way ahead of schedule, but, you know, we'll see what the, uh, what the Lord has. Uh, I want the church to stand with me. We certainly do thank God for your, your giving, for your liberal giving. Pray. Pray for uh, the pastor. I text the media team and told him uh, Matthew 17, uh, but I made a mistake. <laughs> thank you, Jesus. To, to air his human, to forgive his divine. So I hope that they forgive me. <laughs> so we want to look at Matthew chapter 16. Very uh, familiar passages of scripture. And I just want to invite your attention uh, to verse 24. To verse 24. If you had to say amen. Amen. And then it says, it reads as thus. It says, Then Jesus said unto his disciples, If any man come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever shall save his life shall lose it. And whosoever shall lose his life for my sake shall find it. For what profiteth a man if he gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? And I want to want you to read with me again that verse out of 1624. Can we read that together? Uh, then said Jesus unto his disciples, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself and pick up his cross and follow me. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we certainly thank you for this time and this opportunity to stand before these great people to preach your anointed word. We ask you, Lord, that you sanctify my mind, my spirit, my soul, and my body. And we ask you, Lord, that you bless these not great people, that they may receive with meekness the engrafted word of God to the saving of the soul. Lord, you know that the desires that we have and you know that the needs that we want from you, Lord, we ask you that you bless us in this world. Heal the few sick among us, save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. Fill with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. Father, we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I finally see Sunday, Mr. Grady, amen, I want to wish you a happy birthday, I finally came on in, you probably went to lunch already or something like that. <laughs> we certainly praise God for this uh, opportunity, opportunity uh, to preach uh, unto you on today, and uh, the word of the Lord is coming out of that book of St. Matthew chapter 16 and verse 24. Saying, Jesus said unto his disciples, Jesus said unto his followers, those that would follow after him, if any man will come after me, you make it up in your mind to come after Jesus. He says, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. And I want to take for a subject on this morning or this afternoon now, uh, uh, this morning still, follow me. Follow me. Can we say that together? Follow me. And as uh, we had uh, preached on last Sunday, and I hope we had made it abundantly clear that God has a plan that God has a plan for you. In other words, that everything that God 
God created and He designed. He created and designed it for a plan for you. So God has a plan for your life. And he declared this plan before the beginning of the world. And the scripture says that He foreknew you. He was in a relationship with you, spiritually speaking, before you were born. And, and, and to sum it up, to say that it's in God that we live and move and have our being. And we have to realize that we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus, prepared unto good works. So God, he literally has determined the bounds of our habitation. He literally has determined the time and the dispensations in which we should live. It's not, it's not by happenstance or it's not by uh, a chance that you're here in Erie, Pennsylvania at this appointed time. It's all a part of God's plan. My, my father, I, I, you know, I thank God uh, uh, for him, but he, he, he told me that, son, you're here because the prophylactic busted. And, and, you know, that's a horrible thing to say to your children. I didn't put it to his charge. But, you know, uh, uh, God, God immediately healed my mind and told me, you're here because I want you to be here. Who do you think popped it? Who do you think allowed it? Hallelujah, uh, the circumstances to come together for you to come into fruition it is God. If God be for you, no man can stop you. If God is with you, hallelujah, if God is on your side, then nothing by any means shall destroy you or hurt you. That's why we often quote that scripture that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Uh, no matter what man creates God, he can operate in such a way to turn it around. How many of you know God can turn a situation around? God, God is able. He can turn the situation around. So God has a plan for us. And we have to realize that we are a part of God's plan. And, and if God has a plan, and if I have a plan, that those plans are contradictory of one another because God is not going to alter his plan and we ought to alter our plan because God is greater than we are. God has more wisdom and knowledge than we do. Uh, God declared the thing from the end, from the beginning and God is always omnipresent and God is always omnipotent and God is always all-knowing omniscient and he knows what's best for us. He, he knows what's best for us. He, he knows what's best for you. And, and you want to follow after God's plan. Because God's plan is greater. And like I said, that we have to realize that God will never alter his plan. God, God is sure. God is faithful. Because if God started to alter his plan, that would make him unstable. That would make him an unstable God. And, and God is not unstable. God is sure. God is steadfast. You can depend on God. I, I like what the scripture says that it's of the Lord's mercies that, that we are not consumed because his compassions, they, they fail not. The Bible says they are new every morning. You can count on God renewing his compassion towards you every morning because the word of God says, Great is thy faithfulness. God is faithful. Amen. You can trust in God. You can put your hopes in God. You can look to Him for what's coming to your help and know that all your help coming from the Lord. I mean, believe that on today. Have you tried on today? Do you know Him to be faithful? Do you know Him to be steadfast? Do you know Him to be uh, unmovable? Do you know Him to always abound in the name of Jesus? So, so as we look at the scriptures here on today, my God, I feel the Holy Ghost moving in this place. As we begin to look at the scriptures on today, we're looking at a very familiar passage of scripture uh, of the closing of Jesus' earthly ministry. And he begins to ask his disciples earlier in this particular book when he was going through Capernaum that, 
the place where Jesus preached and the way Jesus taught most of his ministry because he had a bigger audience. He had a bigger uh, 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 way of traveling because every time he committed a, a, a miracle, a sign and a wonder, the word got out and great crowds came to him. And Jesus was awesome in his teaching. The Bible says that he taught as one having authority. Not as the scribes and the Pharisees. And he taught as one and he amazed those that were in his audience by the wisdom and the knowledge that he had. And, and why not? Because he was the word that was made flesh and he dwelt among us. And, and Jesus begins to pull his disciples aside because he was about to ascend to a deeper level in ministry. And his ascension into a deeper level in ministry meant that he was about to give his life on that cross. He was about to give his life to those uh, like you and I, those that needed help, those that needed salvation. The Bible says it behooved Christ to suffer. Uh, Jesus came to this earth this time to suffer as the Lamb of God, to give his life as a ransom for you and I. He gave his life uh, so that we can have a right to the tree of life. The, the Bible says that God so loved the world that, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And, and Jesus came to give his life. He told his disciples to behoove Christ. That, that word behoove means he was necessary. Ha, ha. How many know Jesus going to that cross was necessary? Oh yes. How many know that Jesus dying and raising up on the third day was necessary? How many know that Jesus going and sitting up on high and laying in captivity captive and giving good gifts unto me was necessary? It was, it was necessary that he died. It was necessary that he give his life. It, it was necessary that, that, that he be wounded for our transgressions, that, that he be bruised for our iniquities, and, and that the chastisement of our peace be laid upon him. And with his stripes, uh, it was necessary that by him being with his stripes that we can receive healing, that, that we can receive deliverance, that, that we can receive our hope back and our joy back and our peace back. Uh, oh my God, I thank God for the cross. I thank God for Jesus. Thank oh God that he was obedient unto death. Uh, even the death of the cross. Uh, oh my God, because we were all born in sin. Uh, and shaped in iniquity. Oh God, I thank God. I feel a whole other preach coming on. Because I, I hear about John. John. John was looking for somebody to open the seal. And, uh, in the book of Revelation and couldn't find nobody. And he begins to weep and to cry. Hallelujah. And the angel told him, don't weep, John. Hallelujah. For the Lamb of God, he's worthy. Hey, come on and give God a praise. And you know that Jesus is worthy. Oh, he's worthy. Oh, yes, he's worthy. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. So he gathers his disciples together because uh, about to bear on his journey. He was uh, about to go to a different level of ministry. So he wanted his disciples uh, to know who he is. Oh my God, it's important for us uh, to know who Jesus is. Uh, it's important to us to know uh, who he is because uh, you can't get this thing uh, uh, by your mama's testimony. You can't know him uh, through your daddy's testimony. You have to know him for yourself. Uh, they have a saying in the old days that every talk got a stone on top. Oh God, in the testing trials, you got to rest in the Lord for yourself. The trouble in your way, you got to wait patiently for yourself. Oh my God, when situations arise and sudden destruction come upon you, you you gotta know who to call for yourself. Oh, you wanna give God a praise. Oh my God, I wanna know you. Oh my I wanna know you. Don't you wanna know him? Oh yes, my God, so they Jesus was inquisitory. He gathered his disciples together. 
and he begins to question them about the popular, the popular saying about him. First, he started with the general. He said, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they answered him in general. They said that some say that thou art John the Baptist. Some say that thou art Elijah. Some say that thou art Jeremiah. And some say that thou art just one of the prophets. You see, they didn't know who Jesus was. Oh, that's why there was a lot of confusion in the land. Oh, God, they was thinking that he was somebody but then he got it to the specific, his main point, and he asked his disciples, who do you say that I, the Son of Man, am? It's important for you to know him. It's important for you to know him. And if somebody would have asked him, who Jesus is, who's this Jesus that you serve, who's this Jesus, he knows how to get 
want to give God a praise.
The Lord gives you an anointing to be a witness unto him. The Lord has an assignment for you. Everybody's assignment is different. Hallelujah. Why? Because it's people in different conditions, different situations, who he delivers you from, but then he sends you back to. Uh, they knew what you were. Uh, they knew how you acted. Some of them, when they walk in the door, because they didn't know you'd been changed, they start hiding their purse. They start hiding their kids. Uh, they start hiding their money. They start putting up the alcohol. Hallelujah. Uh, they used to do some of them with gossipers, so they stop talking. Hallelujah. But some of them say, but no.
church. 
is expressly designed to the members of Christian ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Thank you, Lord. And we want the church to stand. Amen. And give God a praise. And welcome to you to Christian ministry. Amen. Let's just come around and shake their hand and we'll give God a praise. Amen. Amen. Sister Kathy, can you get their names right down for me? Amen. Amen. Christian ministry is growing. Jesus. 